Hello everyone and welcome to this Holy Grail Games video. My name is Georgina and today I'm here with Jamie. Good morning everybody. And we are going to be explaining how to play Museum Pictura, a set collection game by Olivier Millison and Eric Dubu. So let's get stuck in. So in Museum Pictura you are playing as an art curator and you are going to be attempting to fill your museum, which is your player board here, with paintings. So a painting card looks like this. Uh, on your painting card you have obviously got a beautiful illustration and some information about the painting that is shown and then at the top of the card you have a small bar here which contains all the information you're going to need for gameplay. The colour of the bar refers to the painting's period, so here it's green, it refers to romanticism. Each card it also has an icon, this refers to the painting genre, in this case it's landscape. And then we also have a bit of text here and a number, and this is the painter. So the number in itself is not a value, it simply uh, allows you to identify the, the painter more easily and to make the cards a little bit easier to read. So here, number 20 is always going to refer to Turner. So these painting cards are going to be placed into your museum throughout the game and used for different actions to gain prestige points, and the player with the most prestige points at the end of the game wins. So here we've set up the game in accordance to the manual and we're going to explain the turns to you. So a turn of Museum Picture is going to happen in two phases, starting with the acquisition phase. Exactly. So there are four international museums because you are not the only museum in the world, you no. and your competitors, the other players <laughs> around the table. Uh, the four international museums are kind of like non-player museums. They have paintings, they are willing to sell or buy paintings from you uh, for a price, depending on what their interests are. And these are reflected by what we call the trend cards, which are these little green cards right here. Now these appear multiple times in the game. The museums have one, there is a public trend card, there's also a personal trend card, we will explain those later. For the moment, it's only the museum trend cards that interest us. So, at the start of your acquisition phase, very simply, you draw two cards from any painting deck. We've separated the decks here into two. Um, you can separate them into however many is practical for where you are playing. Then you have to take one card from your hand and exchange it with one of the international museums. It can be any card, not just the ones you drew. So this is where the trend card comes in. For example, I have my eyes on this blue Impressionism card. I want it for a future collection, so I'm going to try and get it from this museum. Or I will get it from this museum, but what will it cost me? Or what could I gain even? Because in this museum, you can see that each of them is divided into two columns. On the left, we have the cards that correspond to at least one of the criteria of the trend card. And on the right, we have cards that don't correspond to any criteria. Thematically, the left cards are paintings that the museum wants, that they are interested in. It doesn't mean you can't get them, it just means you will have to pay for them. And on the right are cards that don't really interest the museum that much, so they're much easier to get. Okay, so the Impressionism card I want is not one that interests this International Museum of Tokyo. I can probably get it for a pretty decent price or even make some prestige points on the side. Okay. So what I'm going to do is trade them this Renaissance card, which is mythology from this little icon here. We can see on the trend card that mythology is something that interests this museum and it is worth two prestige points. Because I am giving them a card which they value at two prestige points and I'm gonna take a card from them that they value at zero prestige points, I gain two prestige points. Great. Boop. There we go. However, um, if I was to do that same exchange the other way round, mm -hmm. i.e. I was going to take a mythology card from them and give them something that didn't interest them, that would cost me two prestige points. Right. I can also give them a card that doesn't interest them and take a card that interests them more, so I could lose three or maybe just one point. It really depends on the card you're giving and the card you're taking for the, the final gain of prestige points. Absolutely. So we can refer to the prestige points as a kind of currency here. Exactly. Okay. Not just victory points, but a currency as well. So you can gain them, but also spend them during play to gain different effects, maybe slow down the end of game, all that kind of thing. Exactly. Okay, great. So once you have performed your acquisition phase, all the other players also get to do their acquisition phases uh, if they wish to. So uh, this is simply going to be trading a card with uh, the international museums. Once everybody has done that, then we are going to move on to the active player's action phase. 
So during my action phase, I'm going to have one of three actions that I can perform. The first one is going to be exhibiting cards because, well, what's a museum without any paintings in it? Very boring. <laughs> yeah. So um, I will have my hand of five starting cards and what I'm going to be able to do is exhibit a card into my museum. My museum board is a grid of 25 spaces. Each space corresponds to the little bar at the top of the card and that's how that works. So as these cards don't have any costs, the cost of uh, exhibiting a card is just going to be one for one. To exhibit a card in my museum, I simply discard any other painting card in my hand of my choice. Um, I am not going to gain any points directly from exhibiting a card. However, there is a public trend card on the central board here, which is the one just next to the deck of trend cards. This is going to show what the public would like to see at the moment. So here we can see that they are interested in artist number 16, they are interested in historical paintings, and they are interested in Renaissance. Now, unfortunately, my card is not any of those things, so I'm not going to score any immediate points for placing that card. But obviously, if I have the right cards in my hand, then if I, then I may be able to do so by continuing to exhibit. This is an action that you continue to do as many times as you wish, uh, as long as you have enough cards in your hand to play. I'll mention that the second card you've exhibited there is a historical card, is. which is part of the current trend. So you yes. would gain two prestige points. I would gain two prestige points for that. Another thing that I can do is I can exhibit a card that is in another player's discard. So this is where it becomes interesting to pay attention to what other players are doing and what they currently have in their discards. In order to do this, I am going to discard a card into my own discard the same way that I normally would. And then I can take a card here, for example, from Jamie's play player <laughs> discard, as you're the only other player at the table, uh, which will get exhibited straight into my museum. Now, of course, I have taken a card from you, that's going to cost me a little oh, bit. Um, mm -hmm. It's always one prestige point. The cost of taking a card from another player's discard is always one prestige. They are going to gain one point and I will lose one point. So I'm giving them a slight advantage, but if it's a card that I really want, then obviously there you go. It's also a good way to manage your discard, maybe uh, putting some cards in there to try and lure other players mm -hmm. into coming and taking from you. So that is the um, exhibit action, uh, and Jamie, you can explain the next possible action, which is the temporary exposition. Exactly. Exhibit, sorry. So the overall goal of Museum, it is a set collection game. We are trying yes. to build these big collections of cards, of paintings, which we will score based on their numerical value. Yes. So to build a collection in Museum Pictura, as Rosemary explained, you have this grid of 25 spaces, yep. and you put cards of the same period and or genre, bearing in mind that if you can maximize the kind of crossover between those two elements, you can sometimes multiply how much a card is actually worth at the end of the game. Um, now, during the game, you can reorganize your museum however you want. Yes. At the end of the game, you get one final phase to really set it all out, because, which is important because cards need to be adjacent to one another um, in order to be able to be scored. Now, that may seem a bit anecdotal, but at the same time, it can get very tricky once you have a lot of cards in your museum. There is a certain puzzle aspect to it, and some of you will probably be forced to make a choice between one collection or another. Yes. We'll get into that a bit later. Why am I talking about this now? Because there are actually scoring phases during the game where you can take your collections and valorize them for prestige points, which is called a temporary exhibition. Thematically, it's like a special event, a soiree, as it were, back in the day, uh, where you invite all your patrons to come and see a specific group of paintings. So, what I have here is cards all of the same color, all of the same period, in this case Impressionism. Yep. You notice that all the genres are different, that doesn't matter because I'm going to exhibit on a period, not on a genre. Okay. okay. So we have the exhibition board here with a set of exhibition tokens. Each exhibition can be performed twice per game, but once per person. Yes. So once I have done this um, exhibition, I cannot redo an Impressionism one later on in the game. The first person to do an exhibition of a certain period or genre gains three prestige points when they take the token. You'll notice that the second token, however, doesn't have any points. So the first person to do it, kind of, you know, that wow effect, the first person to Novelty block. Novelty bonus. Exactly, you get that little bonus. So, you take your prestige points, or not, if you're late to the game. You then score your collection based on the number of cards in it. Now, as a quick reminder, there are, of course, gaming aids of with the points on it. So a minimum collection size is four cards and it's only worth one point. Mm. However, with my token, that's a total of four points. 
which isn't too shabby, that's especially for early on in the game. But that's not all of it. The prestige, the reputation that um, running these events brings to you allows you to choose an exhibition bonus. So at the top, there are six different effects. You take your token and you put it on the effect that you would like to receive. Some of them are immediate, some of them are permanent, some of them are end game scoring. They do what they say on the tin, we'll let you read them when you get to them. Um, once I've done that, my exhibition is complete and that is the end of my turn. Okay, great. So the final action that you have the option of performing on your turn, if you choose not to exhibit cards or perform a temporary exhibition, is an inventory. So this is going to be very important for managing your discard, uh, which is one of the main challenges of Museum Pictura, as performing an inventory is going to allow you to pick up all the cards you currently have in your discard. So when I perform an inventory, I simply, as I said, take all of the cards in my discard pile back into my hand, but I'm going to get a little extra bonus as well. I'm going to be able to take one favour card, uh, which I will explain in a moment, and we are also going to be able to take away all of the current patron cards and refresh them, which is also a really good bonus to have. Yes. Um, so yeah, the inventory action is very simple uh, and is great for temporising a bit and mm -hmm. also for obviously managing your discard, very important. And it really is as simple as that. It is. So once you have uh, performed all of one of your obligatory actions, uh, you also have a couple of free actions that you can do. So a free action is, as I said earlier, one of these favour cards. They're super handy. They are a one-off bonus. You can play one per turn. You play the card from your hand and then just discard it uh, next to the favour card deck. Uh, the one other free action you can do is the patron cards. Indeed. So patron cards represent these uh, rich and powerful patrons that will visit your establishment. Yep. And if they like what they see, you get a bit of a bonus. Nice. So that is represented by these five cards here on the patron board. You'll notice that there are two bigger items at the top. Um, these, or sometimes one, these are the cards that the, these patrons want to see in your museum. Yes. So for example, um, the two here, if you have two Renaissance paintings and two landscape paintings, doesn't matter if it's the same cards, different cards, whatever, if they are in your museum, once per turn, you can take one of these cards, so in this case that one, um, and you would gain the bonus underneath. Now these sometimes allow you to take cards or just score prestige points. Once again, it's all written on the actual card. Yes. So in general, there there will be one or two effects on the card and it will be one or the other. Exactly. Uh, so yeah, you can have as many of those next to your board during the game mm -hmm. and their effects are really great. We encourage you to take advantage of patrons. It should be mentioned yes. that these free actions can be performed at any point during your turn. Yes, they absolutely. don't have to be performed after. Also, as a, rem or rather, as a rule, um, it's not the only way to gain favour cards. Of course. So you start the game off with one favour card, and then as the game progresses, as you move along the prestige tracker, you'll see that here we have these triangular favour tokens. So each time you pass uh, 10 points on the favour track, so let's say I ended up here, uh, you are going to move your favour token along to the next denomination of 10 points, so here it would be 20, uh, and draw a new favour card. So the reason you have these triangular tokens is obviously as you can both gain and lose prestige points uh, in Museum Pictura, you may end up passing the same denomination of 10 points more than once. Uh, obviously, you can only claim your favour card once. So there you have it, your free actions, a favour card and a patron. You are free to do both, of mm -hmm. course, yes, it's not course. one or the other. Uh, and that is it for a very rich turn. Yes, very. <laughs> so once you have completed your turn, you have a very brief end of turn phase to consider. The end of turn, you are going to be checking the size of your hand. You can have a maximum of eight painting cards in your hand and a maximum of three favour cards in your hand. If you have more than eight painting cards, you will simply discard down uh, into your own discard, of course, until you reach the appropriate number. And the same goes for favour cards, except you will discard those into the, dis the favour card discard pile. Once you have done that, you need to check your score, because the first player to reach 50 points in mu Museum Picture is going to set off the end of the game. If you haven't reached 50 points yet, then play continues. Exactly. So that's one turn, yep. and that's the same for every player. Yep. Um, the only little difference is when we come back to the first player, so the first player has a little token to remind them, yep. that's what we call the end of the round. Yes. So before the first player begins their next turn, there is one very small action, because time moves on, as do trends, we flip over a new trend card. So now the public wants to see something different, or maybe it's a bit similar, or 
whatever. So play obviously continues until one player reaches or passes 50 points on their turn. So if a player does this, they get to take the 50, po the 50 points token, which is going to come next to their board and is going to score them five extra points. And after that, that is setting off the end of the game. So all remaining players at the table are going to play one final turn each. And once they've done that, then that is the end of the game. And we move on to final scoring. So for final scoring, you're going to have a certain amount of things to be doing. So first of all, obviously, it's a game about art curation. It's a game about collections. You are going to be scoring the collections that you've managed to form during the game. So what's interesting about this is combined with the temporary exhibits, you can end up scoring the same collection twice during the game if you manage to time everything correctly. So you are going to score all of your collections, both period and genre that are on your board. And then after that, you are going to score your personal trend card. As we mentioned, the trend cards come back several times during a game of Museum Pictura and you have your own personal one. This is your museum's private objective, which you are going to keep hidden throughout the game and then reveal during final scoring. Every single card that you have in your museum that corresponds to one of these criteria is going to score you the corresponding number of points. Contrary to the rules for the rest of the trend cards, where in general if you correspond to several criteria you're only going to score the highest, for your personal trend card you're going to score all of them. So if you happen to have a card that is both Impressionism and um, mythology. Uh, mythology, thank you Jamie, <laughs> plus artist number five, you're going to score all of those points, so a total of six per card. So it can be pretty very enormous. Very lucrative. Yes, very lucrative indeed. So once you have finished your personal trend card, you're going to have a certain number of um, exhibition and museum bonuses. So this corresponds to this area here on your player board. So if you have managed to fill your grand gallery, which is this cross shape in the colour of your player board, you're going to score five extra points. If your entire museum is full, which is slightly tricky, but not as hard to do as you might think, um, you gain 15 extra points. And then you're going to gain a certain number of points depending on how many temporary exhibitions you performed during the game. So it can get pretty high as well, depending Indeed. on how many of them you chose to do. Um, once that is done, you have one final scoring step, which is to um, tally up any end of game effects that you gained from your temporary exhibition bonuses. And then we have a slightly less nice thing Yes, to because do. it can't always just be favourable, as it mm. were. Um, you will actually lose points based on the cards in your discard. It's very simple. You take the number of cards in your discard, you check your gaming aid, and it will tell you how many points you lose. Yes. Thematically, this is kind of you having all this very precious art in your hands and not really doing anything with it, which isn't generally seen as a good thing. No. So there is a way to lose points for that. Um, losing points is never good, especially at the end of the game. Um, so that does force you to keep an eye on your discard pile. Yes. Of course, it's up to you. Do you try and manage it during the game? Do you take a hit at the end? Do you try and do a bit of both? You generally want to do a bit of both. <laughs> um, that's completely up to you, which then gives us all a final score. Yes, and the player with the most prestige points once final scoring is complete is the winner and the best museum curator of them all. <laughs> And that is it. Exactly. Uh, that is an explanation of how to play Museum Pictura. I hope that this has been useful to you. Uh, we have other videos available right here on our YouTube channel. And at Museum Pictura is available in a game store near you right now. Thank you so much for watching and we will see you soon in a new video. Bye everyone. Take care everybody.